This presentation commemorates the awarding of a blue plaque to Mari Bethel Beauclair by the Heritage Committee of the Birmingham Civic Society. The event was held on October 9, 2020 in the rotunda inside the Library of Birmingham. Government COVID-19 restrictions prevented the unveiling of the plaque outside the Shakespeare Memorial Room in the Library of Birmingham as originally planned. This location was chosen because of Mary Bethel Bokley's close association with George Dawson as his amanuensis. It was due to Miss Bokley's shorthand reports that many of Dawson's lectures, speeches, sermons and prayers have been preserved. When COVID-19 restrictions are lifted, the plaque will be positioned outside the Shakespeare Memorial Library, which is situated on the ninth floor of the Library of Birmingham. In 1871, while working for George Dawson at the Birmingham Morning News, Mary Bethel Beauclair became the first, first female reporter in England. Mary Bethel Beauclair was a pioneer in the teaching of shorthand in Birmingham and in 1888 she officially introduced typewriting to Birmingham at the Birmingham and Midland Institute. In the same year she was appointed as the first fem female teacher at Rugby, an English boys public school. This was the first time shorthand had been taught in any such school. Helen Blaine, who lives in Australia, and Sue Beauclair, who lives in New Zealand, are great-grand-nieces of Mary Bethel Beauclair. They were disappointed that they could not attend the occasion, but were delighted and grateful that it was live-streamed and that their speeches were read. This video provides a record of Helen and Sue personally reading their speeches. My name is Helen Blaine and Marie Bethel Beauclair was my great-grandfather's sister. I thank the Heritage Committee of the Birmingham Civic Society for favourably responding to my request in 2010 that my great-grand-aunt be considered as a future recipient of a blue plaque. I was delighted that the year 2020 was chosen in keeping with the 175th anniversary of her birth on October the 10th, 1845. My husband John and I live in Australia and are greatly disappointed that we cannot be present. Thank you Penny Colburn for suggesting that I write a speech to be read today and for keeping me informed over recent years. I was a young child when my mother, Margaret, née Beauclair, told me that our ancestor, Marie Bethel Beauclair, was the first lady reporter in England, the first lady teacher in an English boys' public school, rugby, and that she introduced typewriting to Birmingham. My mother told me that she was buried at Keyhill Cemetery and that her gravestone was close to the renowned George Dawson grave. I was shown treasured newspaper cuttings, a biography from an 1891 phonetic journal, and books with acknowledgments of high praise regarding Miss Beauclair's shorthand reports of George Dawson's speeches and lectures. These items are now in my safekeeping. Marie Bethel Beauclair was fondly known to her nieces and nephew as Auntie Polly. In 1959, when I was aged 14, one niece, whom I called Auntie Annie, gave me a pretty little Christmas card. It had been given to her by her Auntie Polly and read, Annie, with Auntie Polly's love, Christmas 1894. A note which Auntie Annie attached to the card read 
My dear Helen, I have enclosed the Christmas card sent to me from Auntie Polly, who was Miss Marie Bethel Beauclair, 65 years ago. If you keep it as long as I have, you will be an old lady. Love from Auntie Annie. Today, in 2020, I am an old lady of 75 and I still treasure the pretty Christmas card. I think my mother Margaret, Auntie Annie and great-grand-aunt Marie, whom I also like to think of as Auntie Polly, would be delighted about the unveiling today. Marie Bethel Beauclair's personal achievements are trailblazing. I was always inspired by her determination to work hard to succeed, but it wasn't until after I nominated her for a blue plaque that I started to research her in depth. Subsequently, I discovered the extent to which she was dedicated to her students and how much she encouraged women. In the newspapers of her day, there were many articles and advertisements relating to her, and I found an abundance of articles written about her and by her in the phonetic journals. I also retrieved her address to the first International Shorthand Congress in London in 1887. Using all the new information, I wrote a story about Marie for the Beauclair family, and I set it against a backdrop of the times. In 1854, Marie Beauclair was forced to leave school aged nine during the Victorian era of rigid gender and class prejudice. Her father died, leaving her mother, twin siblings and herself to battle hard times. Marie's determination manifested itself when she was a child, particularly around the age of 12, when she retrieved an old Pittman shorthand manual from some waste paper. In 1857, learning shorthand and occupations using shorthand were reserved for males. Despite discouragement from her family and others, Marie persevered in teaching herself from the manual. By the early 1860s, before she was 20, her ability and her devotion to shorthand had been noted by some intellectuals. These included George Dawson, who allowed her to teach shorthand in the vestry of his church. By 1871, Marie Beauclair was reporting for George Dawson at the Birmingham Morning News, and in her address at the first International Shorthand Congress, she said, Another way in which, by the aid of phonography, I have been enabled to do some lasting service has been in recording the eloquent utterances of one of the world's most gifted teachers, George Dawson, M.A., of the Church of the Saviour, Birmingham. For many years, I reported from week to week those high discourses and those tender, impassioned, soul-inspiring prayers which touched the hearts of all who heard them and which, but for phonography, would have been entirely lost to the world. End of quote. Marie Beauclair was correct because George Dawson was an orator rather than a writer. Marie Beauclair's heartfelt belief in the value of shorthand and typing led her to be a prominent leader and pioneer in both fields. In 1891, Councillor R. F. Martineau praised her work at the Birmingham and Midland Institute by saying, The shorthand and typewriting department over which Miss Beauclair presides is by far the largest and most successful branch of the Institute School of Commerce. Thousands of pupils have passed through the hands of Miss Beauclair in connection with this Institute alone, and many young men in Birmingham owe their start in life to the knowledge they have thus gained. End of quote. In the 1880s, 
shorthand and typing courses and careers were still dominated by men. But my research revealed Marie Beauclair's advertisements, prompting women to join her classes. At the International Shorthand Congress in 1887, she spoke of her instruction class for ladies and gentlemen. I'll close my speech with two quotes. The first is from an article I found in the Phonetic Journal, December 1887, which mentions a meeting of the Birmingham and Midland Institute Shorthand Writers Association, established by Marie Beauclair in 1887. The speaker said, Miss Beauclair was an enthusiast and he thought it was well for Birmingham that she was an enthusiast on such a subject as shorthand. The members of her classes, who he had observed most closely, could not fail to recognise how earnestly she studies their interests and was ever ready to waylay any person who could serve them or help forward in any way the cause she had at heart. End of quote. The speaker later said he knew none so well organised and likely to be so extremely useful to their members as the shorthand classes at the Midland Institute. He certainly knew of none which were helped and presided over by anyone with so much efficiency, enthusiasm and earnestness as their teacher and General Honorary Secretary, Miss Beauclair. End of quote. Finally, I shall quote Miss Beauclair herself when she addressed the first International Shorthand Congress in London. When speaking of her association, Marie Beauclair referred to Queen Elizabeth I, who once said, I am but a feeble woman, yet I have the heart of a king. End of quote. I feel sure that after people view this blue plaque, many will want to learn more about Marie Bethel Beauclair. I hope they will be inspired to persevere against all odds in pursuit of their aspirations and that they will encourage others to follow their dreams regardless of their circumstances. Thank you. Greetings from New Zealand. Not being able to attend the special event to commemorate my great-great-aunt Marie Bethel Beauclair, younger sister of my great-grandfather Richard Beauclair, must rank among my life's most bitter disappointments. Plus, I always enjoy a visit to Birmingham, as I was born there, in Loveday Street, close to the Shakespeare Memorial Library, and spent my first nine years in Shirley before we emigrated to New Zealand. I first became aware of Murray in the early 1980s when I started to research my family tree, and a cousin of my mother sent me a copy of the 1891 Phonetic Journal article about Murray. It referred to her having a brother and sister two years older than her. Twins can be very helpful in research, and so I was surprised when there were no birth records of Murray or the twins under the name Beauclair. I then researched under Bethel, Murray's middle name in the Phonetic Journal article, and there were the three births, the twins, Richard and Elizabeth, in 1843, and Maria at 12 p.m. on the 10th of October, 1845. My mother's mother, Rose Beauclair, was Richard's second daughter and seems to have had a strong relationship with Marie and lived with her for some time. In the 1891 census, Rose, labelled niece age 12, is living with Marie, teacher of shorthand typing, in Villa Road, Hansworth, and it seems Marie taught Rose shorthand typing. Her influence continued through our branch of the family. Rose's elder daughter, Kathleen, studied both and used them throughout her life. 
My mother had left school early to care for Rose, who was dying of TB, so didn't take it up herself. But she saw shorthand typing as an ideal occupation for her two daughters. She was disappointed when I chose teaching instead, but she did persuade my sister to abandon her ideas of nursing and study shorthand typing. While I was at Teachers College, I studied typing at night school, in case it came in useful if I couldn't get a teaching job when travelling to England for a working holiday. At that stage, there was no idea of how useful touch typing would prove to be in this electronic age. When my 10-year-old granddaughter was here recently, she was doing some homework on the computer, which included a program teaching touch typing, which was practising and measuring her speed. While the method is a far cry from Marie's time, I find it fascinating that although shorthand is fast disappearing, typing is our most common form of written communication and looks likely to remain so. After my first marriage ended, I decided that rather than reverting to my maiden name, I would take the name Beauclair, as although there are several instances of it being used as a middle name, it had almost died out as a surname among Richard Beauclair's family. He had six daughters and one son. And I hoped it would help keep awareness alive of our famous forebear, who I am thinking of a great deal at this time, as she and her remarkable and inspirational achievements are honoured. In the meantime, I look forward to returning to Birmingham one day and seeing the plaque for myself.